Hello, I'm William Broom and welcome to Sydney Dragway. On today's panel show's Play of the Game, we've got two very special guests. We've got Gemma Dunn, who is a land speed racer, and we've also got Rochelle Splatt, who is, of course, a drag racer, a top fuel drag racer, I believe. Yes. Two yes. record holders. Briefly, before we go into the show, Gemma, can you tell us about your record? Um, so my record was 234 miles an hour, um, so that is still my personal record, but Dad this year in Rosie unfortunately beat me for that fuel record, but that's okay, I wouldn't have any other person beat that record. He's so, he'd come off and he was like, I'm so sorry. I said, that's fine, Dad, it's all good, I'll just beat you next year. At least he apologised and kept, you kept it in the family. Yes, exactly. Rochelle, tell us a bit about your record. Okay, so I was uh, racing in the USA back in 1994 and uh, I was the first woman in the world to exceed 300 mile per hour back then. Um, there was an exclusive club for the first 16 people to go into to run the, the first 300 in the world and I made it into that club number 16. Congratulations, so, yeah, well and, done. Um, so that was a, a, an amazing achievement and it really set me up um, for the rest of my career. Now, many of our viewers will remember Gemma from one of our previous shows. So we have interviewed Gemma, but we will speak with her again today because we love all our guests. But Rochelle, this is your first time yes. on the panel show. Welcome. Thank Great you. Great to have you on board. Tell us a bit about your sport. OK, so my sport, I drive a top fuel dragster, uh, which is 10,000 horsepower. Uh, we cover 1,000 feet in under four seconds, um, o over 300 mile per hour. and. Um, yeah, it's a very, very fast sport, very powerful, very exciting. Um, I was born and into drag racing. I was, I've been around the drag, you know, drag cars my whole life. Mm. And um, yeah, I just, just love it. I love what I do. 300 miles per hour. Yeah. How does that feel? I get asked that all the time and it's really hard to explain because mm. you're very focused in the car and you've, you've got a job to do and you're focusing on your job. Mm. Um, it's, it's really hard to explain how it feels. It's really, unless you do it, I think, you, you know, only the people that have done it before in that short amount of time can really explain it. It's, it's like the adrenaline and just how exciting it is and how you feel when you do get out the car at the other end of the racetrack is, is, is just amazing. So, um, relief at the end. Yeah, it is. Yes. When the parachutes come out, yes. Yeah. You got the parachutes as well. <laughs> yes, we have two parachutes to pull us up. Do you yeah. feel like gravity when that happens? Oh yes, yes, definitely. You, the the force that you feel when you take off from the start line, it's the same force when the parachutes come out to stop you. Do you ever get injured? Do you ever feel your neck's hurting or in pain? Uh, sometimes I get a bit of shoulder, in, you know, mm. muscle and neck pain. But we we're pretty well. Uh, part of the car, we have a moulded seat, mm. uh, we're strapped in tight, we're a, we wear a hands device, we have our, our helmets, our chins strapped down, so we, we're pretty secure in the car so we can't move very much. So you're very safe? Yes. Very safe. Well, we think we, 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 we try to be as safe <laughs> as we can. Yeah. Gemma, we have interviewed you before, but briefly tell us about your sport. Um, so my sport is similar to Rochelle's in the fact that it's a very high powered sport, um, but we definitely do it over a longer track. Um, so our track is nine miles. We don't stay at speed over the nine miles. We only, we get timed over three mm. timed miles. So um, we're up speed by the second mile and we have to hold it um, for, the, the run lasts for overall about a minute, um, which is crazy considering the distance you're covering. Mm. And and the thing with us, when we pull our parachute, it do, it's not violent. Ours is very gentle mm. and um, it's probably my favourite part about the whole thing. Just, just that feeling mm. of you just getting drawn back is, is really good. Um, but yeah, so we, we like race out on the lakes, salt lakes in South Australia. So um, a lot of people are very familiar with Bonneville in America, but um, yes, we do do it here in <laughs> Australia. And there are lots of people who go out with us racing every year that much. I'm intrigued, both of you. Uh, you've performed and you've done the sport abroad. How do you get the cars overseas? Well, well, when I was in the, in the USA, I, I raced for a team over there, so I basically just had to move over there and, and race, and, and everything was over there ready for mm. me. Um, now, everything we use here is brought over from America. So when I came back from there, um, I had to bring over my car, all of our parts, everything to basically put it together to run, and we still do now. Like everything we buy, we buy from the US. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of cars over there, so um, 
you know, if you go over there, it's not, it, you just don't take a car from here to the US. Yeah. Gemma. Whereas we do, we ship the whole thing, um, parts and all. I mean, most of our parts in this car do come from the US, but um, it's such a specialized car, particularly with this being special construction yes. on the on the lake. So this is even more special construction than what some other cars out in Land Speed Racing have. So uh, it's just easier to pack the whole thing up in a container. And the beautiful thing about us <laughs> is the car's quite mm. small, and we do we can pack it down a little bit. And um, but yeah, we we certainly put it all in the container. And customs and everything <laughs> can be quite interesting, um, particularly. Yes. I can with imagine. Australian customs being, uh, you know, as strict as they are, obviously, because we're on the island and we mm. want to keep Australia beautiful, but um, yeah, they are quite strict and it is quite tricky. But. Now, we interviewed you at the beginning of the year. What have been some of your achievements since? Um, my achievements, well, I got back into the car this year. I ha wasn't able to drive the car last year um, due to work commitments with the Commonwealth Games. So this year, it was all about me getting back familiar with the car. Dad had actually made quite a few changes with mm. the car. We've got different internals, we've got different wheels, and we um, are running methanol for the first time. So I was the first member of our race team to drive the car methanol this mm. year. So my achievements were just getting back into the car, getting used to the process again, and getting used to being out there and racing at a high speed. So I was I was happy to reach the end of the track Brilliant. Um, after that first well, Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Rochelle, tell us a bit about your passion for the sport. Oh, my, well, my passion is is huge. Um, it's uh, like I said before, I've been born into it. My dad raced. Uh, it's all I remember is being at the racetrack. Um, he was a he was an amazing driver, my dad. Um, and yeah, I basically had didn't hadn't driven any race car except my top fuel dragster. So I basically just got into this top fuel dragster and and drove it because that's just it's my passion, and I just. T took so much notice of what he did and and his car and and the whole sport mm. that you know I was able to get into my car and, and sort of have the ability to to be told this is how this works and and pick it up so quick um, and yeah I just I just love it I love being at the track I love being I love the team effort mm. being at the track with the team and there's so many people involved and you, 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 your family as well and your friends that you see at every race that you catch up with. Um, it's just a great sport to be involved in mm. and I just so look forward to the next race after I've been yes. to one. Yeah, so... Well, I um, hope you have many, many, many more successful years ahead in the me sport. Me too, thank you. <laughs> Gemma, tell us a bit about your passion for your sport. Oh, it's much the same actually. It's quite uncanny how our stories are very similar in but very different ways. Um, mm. And that's why I think we gel so well so quickly and that's why it's such a good thing what we're doing here. Um, so I, I'm the same, you know, I grew up watching dad and my brother Kurt race this car and another car that we owned and I, I couldn't even drive and I, I didn't have my license or nothing. And I asked dad if he would let me drive their, um, our old race car and one thing led to another, they were going to let me drive, but unfortunately that didn't work out for that year and then we ended up building Rosie. So that's where I sort of started mm. with it. But yeah, you just, you're around it so much. You just involve, it's your life. The mm. people are, com you're comfortable with all the people and your friends and your team. Um, and so when you're getting in the car, it just feels like home and you don't even yeah. realize. You don't even exactly. know why, but it just yeah. feels like home. It's so easy. Yeah. I mean, you're both so passionate about your sports and they must consume a lot of your lives, but surely, mm. You both have some interests outside of your sports. What about you, Rochelle? Well, I have five kids, so they keep me busy. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's when I'm at home, they they keep me very busy. Um, I love fitness, I love health and fitness. So you know, I love going to the gym and and sort of anything active, keeping fit. Um, and that's about all. Like I spend most of my time at home trying to plan to get back to the next race. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> How about you, Gemma? Uh, me, I, I, I mean, I've mentioned this before, I do clay target shooting. Uh, I have represented Australia at World Cups and international events. Mm. So um, that is my passion outside of this sport. But at the moment, this has taken quite a lot of precedence in my life. Mm. Um, obviously, with planning these sorts of things and, mm. and working together and um, rebuilding the car and different bits and pieces, it does become your life. So yeah, clay target shooting. And uh, I just, you know what, I just love going to the movies and hanging out with the family as well. So Absolutely. I don't have any kids and um, 
but yeah, I love my family, so we're a close knit unit. We all love our families, exactly. which is great. Yeah. So you both are working together. Your sports are chalk and cheese. Mm. How does that work? We I just, think us. Yeah, we're just gonna just have fun. I mean, yeah. I want to learn as much as I can um, about land speed cars and, and how it all works and and just everything. I just want to know everything about it. Um, and then obviously I'm gonna get Gemma to come along and hang out with me at my races as well. And um, yeah, it's, I think it's gonna be good. We're gonna learn a lot off each other, I think. Yeah, yeah, we definitely, I mean, we seem to work the mm. same. We, we are both visual people, so we like to look at, you know, what we're getting involved in. And so Rochelle's even asked me to draw diagrams and yeah. just to get her to understand <laughs> yes, our car. Because I've spent time at the car, mm. so um, she's just trying to learn very quickly. But I think yeah. just the way we work together, yes. we've just totally clicked from, from the first moment that we mm. met. And um, I think that just, says everything for what we want to do and what yeah. we plan to do for our sports together and both separately. It's going to make a lot of memories and yeah. you know have good times together mm. like to add to all of our you know what we've done already and um, yeah, yeah really looking forward to it. Yeah. Rochelle Splat, Gemma Dunn, well done congratulations and best of luck. Thank I'm William you. Broom here at Sydney Dragway and you've been watching the panel shows Play the Game. Until next time, bye bye.